Hey, this is Brian Stillman. We're at NAB 2019 in New York City at the Jacob Javits Convention Center. Uh, we've got a, a fun one coming up. This is uh, Kai Browning. He's the conference manager of X Lives Esports. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about esports. Kai, welcome. Sure. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Um, so I want to jump right in. Um, esports has blown up. Yep. I want to know. I remember, so here's the deal. I remember when we had TV shows where they played video games on them. You know, big console things. It's Donkey Kong, and we're going to play and see what happens. We've blown past that. What are the biggest changes you've seen in esports over the last few years? What are the biggest developments? I, I think the biggest developments within esports itself are, one, a lot of backing from traditional sports organizations or sure. venture capitalists. Um, I think the other big thing is esports has now evolved into a, a very large spectating sport. Right. Uh, with live events, selling out arenas and uh, theaters and, you know, anything that you can think of. We were at, they were at the... Uh, the bird's nest where the Olympics were hosted. They've yep. sold out Staples Arena. They've sold out MSG multiple times. Um, and then I also think that there's also this very large rise in uh, broadcast. The amount and, and ability to engage with an audience and essentially uh, through platforms like Twitch or Mixer, things like that, the barrier between a professional and a consumer is essentially non-existent. Well, that's something I wanted to ask about, how the tech has changed and how the tech has sort of helped esports advance. Uh, and not tech in terms of, oh, our computers are better so we can play better video games. Uh, the tech like you're talking about, like streaming software, getting that sort of connection between the audience, between the players, creating that fan sort of connection that I think helps propel traditional sports forwards. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, it's funny because people that are not familiar with the esports space, they go, well, why would you watch somebody else play video games? Right. And it kind of the, in, in a, not in a defensive way, but it's just like, but why do you watch someone play football, right? right? Or basketball or whatever. It's like someone's doing something better than you and you want to learn or it's just a form of entertainment. And so I think that really is kind of what this ideation of streaming is, but as well as you know, LeBron James is not streaming any of his pickup games, right? And you don't ever have an opportunity to interact with him, right? Because his Twitter's run by some PR agency and any right, of his like right. social channels are done the same way. Whereas with esports, it's if I donate or if I just watch and I comment in the stream and part of the dialogue, there's a large chance that that person's going to interact with me, right? And then you just become more affiliated or, or like that's my favorite person now because he you know hey Kai you know thanks for that awesome question let's answer right and so now I just feel I have more affinity towards that person so talk to me a little bit about um, X Live and uh, I guess the eSports Summit um, what is it you guys are doing um, and and tell me a little bit about uh, where you are in the space and and how you're developing Esports sure. moving forward. Sure. So our, our esports conference actually kind of spun off of our annual conference, which focuses on live entertainment and improving the fan experience. Um, about five years ago, we just realized that that esports was growing, uh, and we wanted to be part of it. And because of, you know the the live event component of esports was growing, and that was kind sure. of our wheelhouse. That's where we were. And so the main purpose of our esports conference is to provide organizations and companies that are not currently in the esports space the resources and materials necessary to understand what it is and how to get involved. And so everyone that's in attendance, or I say a large majority of the people that are in attendance are organizations that are not currently involved in esports. And then everyone that is speaking are endemic organizations to esports. So team owners, uh, brands that are activating in the space, league operators, um, players, streamers, casters, player representation, all that kind of stuff. And so again, we're, the whole goal is to demystify and define what esports is and how to get involved. So there's a strong educational component to it. Very much. We, it's very much an educational uh, program and an educational conference. Excellent, excellent. Um, why? You know, why, why was that uh, uh, um, something that you identified as, as necessary? You know, we, we, we've reached a point, obviously, where you don't need to demystify baseball. You might have to explain the rules to somebody, but as a, as a cultural component, it is just uh, ubiquitous mm -hmm. uh, within, within our society, you know, sports. Yeah. You, don't, you don't have to explain it to people. Why are we still at a stage where esports needs this component? You have kids who are growing up with video games. They are no longer kids. You know, millennials mm -hmm. are in their 40s. You know what I mean? These are not people who need uh, this explanation, and yet we still kind of do. What's going on there? What's the disconnect? I think a lot of it is just 
we are trying to provide the correct narrative for uh -huh. what esports is, right? Esports is an all-encompassing term, similar to like if you just refer to sports generally speaking, right? right. Within esports, there's many silos and many communities and many different kind of nuances within right. that. And so my goal with curating the program is to provide the, the appropriate narrative. So to say, okay. it's not bad, and this is where we are actually as a community, as a, as a kind of a, a, a world in this new entertainment platform, right? And, and there's been lots of debate and dialogue around, well, is sports just, a, or is esports just a subset of the sports market? Or, you know, what is, I truly believe that esports has way more to provide than what sports does on an engagement platform and entertainment platform. And so I really think it's it's this new rising and going to be the, the most popular kind of entertainment program. To your point with millennials and Gen Z being one of the largest demographics in the world right, right. now, and they're going to be having that decision power in the next five to ten years. And so, you know, that's what they grew up on. That's what they are yeah. very familiar with. We're seeing it with core cutting and all that kind of stuff, and, and all that's moving more into a digital platform. And it's not something that you have to explain to a, a, a someone who is a parent today a new parent today is not going to be confused or mystified by the notion of video games as a sports the way, say, my dad is. Right, um, exactly. I mean, because they grew up. I grew up playing games. Right. You know, um, so, so what is the biggest challenge right now, and how are you overcoming it? I, I think the biggest challenge within eSports, and, and again, what we're trying to provide and solve within, within XLive is just the fact that that there is a future for this. It's, it's not this fad that's going to come and go, right? The, there are careers within it. There's an ecosystem. There's money to be had. And so I think that's what we're trying to provide value for and, and understanding about is, again, I, even when I told my parents I was in the esports space, this was five, six years ago when it essentially didn't really exist as well as it does now. They're like, oh, okay. And then I actually brought them to an event that I was producing. They're like, oh, this is an actual real thing. Like you're not just playing video games. And so I was like, yes, th there's a whole business component of it. And so that's our key, our key goal. I mean, I think, I think it says something that maybe, maybe not in the way anyone wants that we've entered sort of a, a, a more of a cultural uh, immersion for esports. Uh, the situation with Blizzard um, and the recent uh, discussion surrounding Hong Kong and China. Uh, any thoughts on that and, and what that kind of means for the sport? Esports. Now that we're at a point where someone can say something, and it's going to have international reverberations. You know, it's it's funny because I was on a podcast yesterday, and we talked about this very same issue. Um, it, it's very muddy, right? And, and I think it's a very good learning experience for the community as a whole and the industry as a whole. We had a very similar type of conversation uh, with a professional streamer named Tifu and he was arguing and suing his team for the way that his contract was written. And so then that brought a lot of light to player contracts and how they were written and things like that. And so, you know, it was a hiccup and it, and it kind of brought the industry down a little bit, but it's a really good learning experience to say, okay, well, this is where we know that we're not doing very well at, and so now we need to boister this up and really take, you know, this isn't just fun and games anymore. It's an actual legitimate business, so we need to be very careful. There's, the issues with Blizzard and the gaming communities as a whole is Tencent, which is a, a Chinese-owned company, is an investor in a lot of these video game companies, and so that's why there's a little bit more on the line with some of those comments. Um, but regardless, again, I think this is a very good learning experience uh, for, for the community as a whole. That learning curve within the industry. A little bit, yeah. That traditional sports have shaken out over the last hundred years. Again, if you look at it, esports is the, the joke that, that we say within the community is esports is a 25 year overnight success. Right. right? It didn't really right. get mainstream attention about two, three years ago. Right. But to your point, people have been playing Donkey Kong, Galaga, <laughs> right. Pac Man for 20 plus years at arcade right. cabinets, right? And so we're, we're learning. Well, Kai, thank you so much for being on uh, being on our show. Uh, you having a good time at NAB? You I just am. got here, though. I, right? I just got here. I had some issues with registration, but that's that's not my problem. Did you problem. enjoy standing on line? I did, that's but I was good. standing in the wrong line. But that's okay. Uh, well, but but uh, thank you for curves. having me. Yeah, learning of course. Curves. Learning curves. Learning curves. Uh, this is Brian Stillman. I'm here at NAB 2019 with Be Terrific. Uh, and and if you're here, check out our new product. We have the Agility Quadricep. It's a new uh, LED panel. It's flexible. It is daylight visible. It's waterproof. It's really cool. We just launched it. And uh, I got to say, it is a pretty awesome viewing experience. NAB 2019, Jacob Javits Convention Center here in New York. I'm Brian Stillman with Be Terrific. Stick around. We've got more coverage coming your way.